Good morning and howdy once again. It's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is episode number 54 of my This and That series. I haven't done one in a long time. I have an awful lot to cover. I hope that you would watch the whole thing because uh, sometimes there's goodies near the end. But the average viewing time is four minutes, so. But I, <laughs> come on, please watch the whole thing for a change. Now, I've got uh, viewer gifts to show you and uh, a lot of other things. I've taken a couple trips. You know, we're still in the middle of this uh, scare, this panic. I'm, I'm pretty sick of it because it's... Uh, I don't like government control. I don't like big government. So, you know, to me that's what it's all about. I don't like to be told what to do in a democracy. Most of you will disagree with that, but uh, so be it. <laughs> All right, let's get started. See, I already started to rant in the first 30 seconds. <laughs> All right, let's truly get started. I have talked endlessly about these fine point markers, but I'm still having people say, where do I get those? What is that? But, you know, I've just talked about it, and I'm, I'm sick of talking about them. You're sick of hearing about them. But these are... 10 times better, uh, no, 100 times better than a Sharpie. So get yourself one. Where do you get them? I don't know. A man gave me three of them, but I think you get them on Amazon, but they're quite pricey. They're about $8, but I discovered at Menards very recently that they have the Dixon brand. You know, Dixon made the famous Ticonderoga pencil. How can a pencil be famous? It is. They were great pencils. Also, Dixon dealt in graphite. I get sidetracked here and made crucibles and many other graphite products. But anyway, they have this that they call the Reach. Now, I haven't used this. I was saving this for this video. It appears to be a little bit wider on the tip, but time will tell because I will start using this and then give you reports on it. But they're so much cheaper and they call them Reach because you can get down into a hole. How much do they cost, you ask? Well, I took the liberty of taking a picture of it when I was at Menards, but I cut off the price, but it was like $2.99. Do not confuse it with this $8 combo pack. So watch for one of those. I think you're going to like them. We're always talking about vice grips pliers. Well, here's uh, another one that was patented, and there's the patent number. I'm going to show you the patent, but Pierre Jacques from up in Canada sent this picture to me, and I think this is his grandfather who invented it, holds the patent. He sent me a nice letter as well, and there is the patent. And he said they have the original prototype in their possession and all of the patent papers that were originally uh, sent with this, and look, that's, that's 1901, but apparently it never made it off the ground. Thank you, Raymond Horvitin from Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, sent me an AXA Genuine Loris, used but still very usable, and you know, you cannot have, you cannot own enough of these tool holders. They're, they're just wonderful, although I'll have to admit that the Shars brand and the Chinese ones are just as good. When I was in Florida at the Flywheelers, a man that I talked to handed me this beautiful little brass sanding block, T for tubal cane, and I said, be sure and send me an email right away because I will forget your name instantly, and of course I did, but thank you to him for this, and very nicely crafted, isn't it? I received a package out of the clear blue sky, a couple of weeks ago, and it was from uh, Raymond Jarmillo. Thank you, Raymond. He's out in Denver. And uh, there was a brick in it, among some other things, which will be shown in my What Is It? But I, I thought, well, is this a joke? A guy sending me a brick. Well, and I still don't totally get it, but it says Lincoln School. So apparently a school by the name of Lincoln School, because we did not have a Lincoln School in Street, or at least not that I was aware of, if it was demolished in 1988. But this school, wherever it was, and that doesn't mean it was in Denver, but was made from Streeter Brick. Streeter Brick Company Shale Tex. There were big clay deposits in uh, this area, and now those clay pits are our water supply, our reservoir. 
Uh, and it's good drinking water. It comes from the Vermilion River, but that's what it is. But anyway, you may have seen paving block around the Midwest that was marked BAR, B-A-R-R. -R. That was all made here in Streeter, and they must have made billions of them with a B, because they are everywhere. And all the streets here in the Illinois Valley were originally paved with, with, uh, with brick. And a lot of those are still around, and, uh, but many of them have been blacktopped over. And thanks to Bill Clifford for sending me a couple stickers, which will go up there on the sticker board. Most of you have watched the video on this little Bridgeport model made by James Rossano in New York, and it's just beautifully made, but I get comments all the time. Does it work? Can you cut metal with it? Can you motorize it? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, no, it's really too small to do that, and it, it, it works well enough just with the three axes, but the spindle does not work, and no, there is no motor in there. But I received a nice letter from Paul Hill recently, and he said, be sure and look at Barry Jordan's website, because he made milling machines, and I'm going to show you that right now. They're larger, but they actually are operational. So let's go up to the computer real quickly and take a look at that, and I'll tell you where you can find those pictures. Here's Barry Jordan and you can find these pictures at the Internet Craftsman Museum and they got a website that's where I am right now and you get an idea of the scale there but they actually are operational with a little motor on them and then that was so successful and he was so skilled and you can read the biography of the man, and there he is with the series of other machines that he made over a period of time. Some of you may have heard of him. An amazing man, apparently. Barry Jordan. Why are you showing us a John Deere tractor, you're thinking? I hate tractors. Well, the subject that I want to talk about now is the great industrial designer Henry Dreyfus. He designed the tin work, did the styling on the two-cylinder tractors and on the new generation tractor, as well as hundreds of other things that you see in your house, the Honeywell thermostat and so on. Extremely prolific. And why am I telling you that? Well, for one thing, I'm in awe of great men. I just talked about a great man and this guy is really significant so let me show you something here I am at the art museum in Davenport Iowa and I was out there on, on the very first day of this uh, uh, virus thing you know we were the only ones in the museum and you might say oh you mean there weren't many no we were the only ones there and I went specifically to see this exhibit on Henry Dreyfus, and I did take some footage of that. It's not very good, but I decided to put it in a separate standalone video. Hopefully some people will watch it, but there's Henry Dreyfus in the background, and it was just uh, it's such an exciting day for me. There was no restaurants to eat out in that day, so I had to come right back home. It was about 100 miles away. So watch for a video that I do on Henry Dreyfus. Some of you may never heard of him, but he is just the industrial designer of all time. Long dead. Long dead. You know what? I've shown this little arbor press before, but I don't think I talked about it, nor maybe does anyone hear about it. Anybody want to hear about it? But this was a Peterson Products design, and I just recently discovered this. My friend Russ had this in his basement. I didn't know there were any of these left. I do not own one. Remember, I threw everything away. I was so sick of it. But this was probably the project that sold the least in my portfolio, which I'll show you here in a second because probably it was too complicated for a lot of teachers, not just students, teachers, especially young teachers, and you had to have the equipment to cut gears and a rack, and I would say probably most schools did not have that, so there it is. This is aluminum, and yes, it may, might be of questionable value. I, was, I sold the pattern. I didn't sell the finished project. Let me show you a picture of that, but because of this, in a very recent video, I 
it, because I thought I might re resurrect this and actually try to use this as a pattern and make some. Now I'm not going to. That was way too much work. Instead I went this route and there seemed to be little or no interest in the rack and pinion, which kind of surprised me, but that'll save me a lot of work by not doing anything more with this fiasco. But let me show you the original blueprints. You've seen this before, and this has to go past uh, 50, 45 years because I still lived in Peru. There's my address there, my defunct address. But there is the arbor press. Let me zoom in on it, but it will not be a good picture. This project required a core, so there's the core box, one half of a core box, and there are the two plaster patterns, and you can see a little bit of the core print there on each side. And the core print produced this hollow before it goes by right here. And that was really... No, there were two projects that used cores. As a matter of fact, this is the other one, and they both used the same core box. <laughs> On every one of the projects I had a drawing, and every drawing had a little isometric that I thought was good to show kids, because they can visualize that. A lot of people cannot visualize an orthographic projection type of drawing, which also was on there, but there's my original artwork, if you want to call that, on a green paper. Look at the tape is all dried out. That's almost 50 years old, that picture. And there's a copy of the original drawing. All the drawings were done on Mylar, and I still got those also, but I pulled out this one. It's a copy of a copy of a copy, so it has degraded, but there's that isometric. There's Abraham Lincoln sitting with my complete line <laughs> of projects. There is the Arbor Press in the background. Whether or not that is the same one I just showed you, I have no idea. I doubt it. But on my lap here, I'm trying to show you, I mean on Lincoln's lap, this is the large drill press vise, and I do have a copy of that, you've seen that many times. There is the original wooden pattern made by my brother. There is the plaster pattern, it doesn't show up. What a dork I was, I mean Lincoln was. The white didn't show up in uh, photographs, and there's the finished project. I do not have that one, and it was made with an Acme thread. Enough on that. Thank you, Joe Kiefer from Jacksonville, Florida, for sending me these two pictures. This, he blew up of my dad. That's probably a yearbook picture of my dad. And then you remember this. I showed that not too long ago from our ill-fated boat trip. That's me here on the stern. My brother sitting on the top, and uh, there's Johnny. Of course, Johnny's passed on and so has my brother. That was 1966. Matter of fact, it was the same year that my dad died. And when we left on the boat trip from Peru, Illinois, launched it there in the Illinois River, my mother came down to the shore and she cried. My dad had only been gone three or four months and now her two boys are going to their death on this horrible little boat out into the Gulf of Mexico and then over to the Bahamas. Well, we never made it to the Bahamas, but we've made it as far as Tallahassee, Florida. Let me talk real briefly about my brother Jan who passed away last fall and I'm still grieving. Jan was a hundred times smarter and more talented in almost every way than I am, and I'd like to do a, a whole video on that, so I'm just going to touch real briefly here. This is one of his bronze sculptures of a, a deer, a fawn, and he did a series of uh, bronze before he quit and was broken hearted because he couldn't sell them, but I'll talk more about that later on. This one belongs to my sister. I have none of them. They were made by the lost wax process. This is one that we actually did cast at the high school. The others were made by an art foundry. This article appeared in three local newspapers about a month ago 
a local man who was a neighbor of ours, a businessman and somewhat wealthy, donated $25,000 to the college in a scholarship in my Jan's, my brother Jan's name, and there is the article. We were deeply moved. This is a picture out of the other paper. I'm not sure where this came from, but it's probably taken in the 70s when he was doing the sculpture. He's making a funny face there. This wasn't posed for the newspaper, but he was a man of a thousand faces and voices, and he could do so many different things. Extremely talented, multi-talented. Thank you, Alan Herney from the state of Washington for sending me a box full of books. There's the elements of mechanism, but it turns out to me it's a little bit too much math. It look, looks like a physics book, but there might be some interesting things in there. And then there are, what, five or six books here from a correspondence, American School of Correspondence. That was a very popular way of teaching years ago. This is out of Chicago. So, and the, these books are 40 cents. <laughs> Plain surveying, Algebra 1, Algebra 2. I could stand to review some of that. I really could, should review my trigonometry. Plain geometry, I got A's and I could write the book. But anyway, thank you, Alan. I'm fully aware that I'm always showing you people books and I have a lot of them and some of you guys that like old tractors and engines and things like that may be familiar with these books by C.H. Wendell. C.H. Wendell, he's out of Iowa and some of these books are quite thick and they are studies, for instance here's all of the different engines and products that International Harvester made. So he had a whole series of books like this and probably wrote articles and magazine articles and, and so on. But why am I telling you this, you ask? Because, and there's C.H. Wendell himself, and I don't believe he's passed away. I have these two books too. You might recognize the cover. But the auction is over already. It was an almond auction, April 9th. Online bidding only. And uh, what they were selling is his complete library that he used for reference and for studying and so on in order to write his books. And there were thousands and thousands of items sold in groups. Some of them were brochures, some of them were booklets, some were hardback books. Just everything you can think of that might pertain to these various agricultural and engine products to help him write the books. And at some point, you know, we got to divest ourselves of things. I'm about there myself, but look, it says thousands and thousands of pieces of material on anything he ever wrote about. This is a must-see auction. Well, you missed it. It's over. But it's, it, now it's recirculated to younger men, and apparently he no longer needs them. He led uh, trips over into England, uh, old engine trips like that, uh, and things like that all throughout England and he's apparently sponsored them. I never did go on one but I would have been wonderful picking his brain. This from the last episode but Stan Dyer, and he's down in Missouri, manufactures these sharpeners. I'm going to give a demonstration on that by the way sometime. Sharpening uh, for sharpening lawnmower blades but anyway he sent me some pictures of projects that he made and uh, they're, most of them are my projects, not all of them, but he did a real nice job. So let's take a look at those pictures. There's an engine that he made. That's not mine, that's quite a, a job. There's the bell center punch. The machinist clamp. One of the little wobbler engines. And there's really two of those. The Wiggler, here's a hot air engine, that's not mine, but he did a nice job on that. And thank you for these, Stan. That little machinist vise, and uh, anyway, I hope you found those interesting. I know Jay Miller, and he runs a 
Trinity Graphics, and that's down in Texas. But anyway, he sent me a series of pictures. And this picture, I, you know, I, I missed it now. I don't know if it's his father or grandfather, but he also sent me this picture in regards to messy shops. And uh, this is Howard Miller, and he was um, a teacher. But he had a very messy shop. To me, it doesn't look all that messy, but he was a wood shop teacher. And I've got more pictures to show you. Notice the shop smith and the messy bench, but, you know, he's just having a blast here in his shop. So I'm going to end this video. I covered an awful lot and show you in the last minute or two here a series of other pictures that Jay also sent. And some are more modern pictures. Most of them are. And uh, let's finish out the video with this. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now and thanks for watching.